Hi, this is Chuck Benedict, mentor for Team 997 Spartan Robotics. My next video, I'm not sure if I'm ever going to finish these, but um, I keep getting feedback and I keep finding subjects to talk about, so I'm going to do another one. Uh, I got some feedback on uh, testing. I put a, I didn't think it was a controversial uh, topic out there on uh, Chief Delphi, but uh, I got some feedback from some folks that basically said, you know, what are you talking about? Do you, you absolutely have to have a robot to do testing? It's, you know, uh, there's things that you just can't possibly test for. And uh, yeah, I mean, I agree with that. Um, for sure, you got to have the hardware at the end of the day to actually confirm that um, all the stuff that you've written actually works. But I thought I would, uh, before I go into what I want to talk about, just share a story, some anecdotes. You know, I've been in software development for 25 plus years and uh, wanted to relay, a, you know, a conversation that I typically have with uh, not only students, but, um, you know, with fellow developers over the years. It kind of goes something like this. So uh, I ask a programmer, so, hey, what you working on? And they'll say, well, not, not much. I'm not really that busy. And I'll ask, well, why is that? And they'll say, well, uh, I've done kind of all I can do, but I'm waiting on and then, you know, fill in the blank. Usually it's in robotics, I'm waiting on the robot or I'm waiting on hardware or I'm waiting on an assembly or something. So then I'll say, oh, really? OK, cool. Well, why don't you show me some tests? And then usually I get the look. What tests? Uh, so, um, yeah, you don't need a robot to, to test your code. Um, and I... I said that in a, in, a, in a post and I mean it. Um, there's always tests that you can write. And uh, when you run into a situation where you feel like, hey, I'm stuck, I'm I, it's as far as I can go, think to yourself, well, what kind of test can I write in the interim while I'm waiting on whatever that is to you know, confirm that what I've written actually works. So um, what I thought I would do in this video is, um, you know, in the, in the prior test videos I did, I, I talked really about unit testing. And I didn't really talk about the difference between uh, the different kinds of tests that you can write. Um, you know, you can. And I'm, if you've uh, if you've been in the industry a long time, or you've you know you've been in robotics classes, or robotics clubs that that stress testing, you know these things. But it's really for people that don't really know um, what kind of tests you can write and what they're for. Um, there's real. There's all kinds of tests. There's performance tests and there's stress tests and and there's all sorts of things you can write. But the three primary tests that you really concern yourself with when you're writing automated tests um, are unit tests, system tests, and integration tests. And sometimes the lines are kind of blurred between what is what. So I did three examples of each one with my vision processing project. So I thought, and I thought I would show you the differences and why um, each one of them exists so that when you're thinking about testing for your own project, you know, you have some example that you can go by. So uh, first thing, what are we going to test? So I have an image processor class. You may have seen it in some prior videos. Um, it's fairly simple. It has a process method. And if you've been watching my other videos, um, you may remember it was just process, not process async. Um, I'm not going to really go through why it changed. I'll probably do another video about um, asynchronous processing and some um, improvements that I made to how I process asynchronously. That's kind of a, a bit of a throwback to C sharp. Um, anyway, it's not important for this video, but in any case, I have a process uh, function here. This process function really does two things. It calls my pipeline, which is knitted in the constructor. It calls the process function on it, given an input image. And then um, I call a network table writer and I call the write function. So this, that's all this function does. Um, so when we write a unit test for this class and this method in particular, what our unit test needs to do is it just needs to confirm indeed that I call the process function on a pipeline and I call the writer function uh, on my writer. So let's just go take a look at that unit test and I'll confirm with you that that's really all it does. Um, so as you can see here, um, I mock the, the image processor uh, constructor takes a pipeline and it takes a network table writer. Uh, and so I don't need those things for the unit test. I don't need those things to work and I don't want them to work. Um, I, I'm just testing the specific functionality of the image processor class 
I don't care what other dependencies that it has. I don't care if they work or not. All I want to test is whether or not I call the functions that I mentioned uh, on the other tab. So I'm going to mock those things up using uh, Makito. I explained that a little bit in prior videos. If you don't understand what Makito is, uh, go to the comment section and read up on it. So I mock those up. Uh, I uh, then simply call my process function. Uh, and my process function is an async function, which means once this returns, it's going to return immediately before the processing actually happens. And I have another function on this class called um, await process completion. And this basically waits for this to finish. Probably could have created a process method where there's no, where it basically does it synchronously. And I may yet do that, but I haven't. So you have to call await. After that's done, um, all we're going to do then is verify whether or not on the pipeline, and, and this test is, is uh, looking for it should process my pipeline. That's all it's doing. So I'm going to look at the pipeline mock that I mocked up here. And for one time, did I call the process method? And did I call it with this empty image, which is the same image that I passed up here? So by running this test, I'm confirming that indeed I'm calling the process method in this uh the, 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 I'm calling the pipeline process method in my image processor process method. That's all I'm trying to do. And that's, that's essentially what a unit test is. Okay. So now what do we, I mean, ultimately what the purpose of processing the pipeline is, is to write some data to network tables. So we want to test whether or not we attempted in the writer uh, in this writer class right here, whether or not it actually wrote what we would have expected it to write to network tables as a result of calling this process function. So that's the purpose of this integration test. So I've got an integration test. It writes uh, blue ball results found to network table. And so we're going to um, not mock up as many things. The only thing that we want to mock up in this case is network tables because what we want to do at the end of this test is just confirm to network tables, did I call the put the, the put functions that were required to actually put the values that were going to result from running the process, the, the process in the first place. So uh, I've got a mock for network tables. Uh, here's my object under test. So I'm going to test the image processor. Um, I'm going to create an image, an actual image to process this time instead of uh, creating an empty image before because I actually want to get some results back from actually processing the image. Uh, I'm going to get a ball count and I'm going to get whether or not balls were found. This image is actually sitting on my, in my project directory. Um, I talked about it a little before. Um, so, and there's a way to read in an image and put it directly into a mat or a matrix um, object for processing. Uh, I instantiate my pipeline. And so these methods here exist because uh, while my image processor is the object that's under test and it sort of does everything for you, I need the actual values to compare to what it's going to do. So I am going to actually instantiate a, a, a grip pipeline here myself, and I'm going to call the process method on it with the same image um, so that I can look at the blob results on the pipeline and pull those out to compare with what I actually um, pro uh, processed with the image processor class because that's what's under test. I could hard code the results because I know that this image right here is only got one ball in it. But what, what happens if I replace that image over time and I put two balls in it or whatever? Well, then if I hard coded those values down here, uh, down below in my assertion, then my test is going to fail. And I don't want that to happen. So same thing now. I'm going to take my image processor and I'm going to call the process method on it. And so now um, what I want to do is I want to verify that network tables as part of this process actually got the two puts called on it that I would have expected. And so here I've got, again, I'm verifying that put Boolean um, and put number were called for uh, balls found and the ball counts. And I'm, of course, I'm comparing them to um, the work 
the work that was done here, um, counting the balls uh, through the pipeline. So that's an integration test. Again, I didn't connect up um, to a real network tables. I mocked network tables up right here. So now you probably you don't have to wonder, well, what's a system test? That a system test is basically, I don't want to mock this up. I want to instantiate network tables or at least something that resembles network tables. And I actually want to system test or chain the whole system, my two systems together in effect, because I have um, image processing kind of going on one system here. And the result of that is going to hand over a call to network tables sitting on the network somewhere to write values to it. And I want to confirm that values actually made it over to that system. So here's my system test. A uh, couple of interesting things now that are uh, here in my test that you probably hadn't seen, or uh, if you're new to it, you haven't seen before. Um, you can use what's called fixturing in JUnit to do some things to set up the state of your test before you actually run it. And these two decorators here, uh, Amper before class and after class, these methods, it, it causes these methods to run once um, when uh, this class is instantiated, one and only one time. And as a result, these methods are declared as statics. And anything that, any variables that these things set, uh, those variables have to be statics as well, because they're only going to be called once. Uh, and in this case, I am starting a network tables uh, simulator server. And it's part of the server that is part of this overall project. Uh, and if you've watched the videos, you know that the purpose of this project is to uh, be able to design code and test image processing, uh, self-contained all on one workstation. And so uh, the result of being able to do that is to write to network tables and I don't wanna have to have a Robo Rio to write to. So I have my own network table simulator application. And that is what this uh, function right here is doing. It's starting that simulator in preparation to run this uh, image processor test. Likewise, I have a kill function, um, which kills off, and this is run right before the class is completely done with and is gonna shut down. Here's my test. It writes blue ball results found to network tables. Same name as the integration test one, because it's essentially gonna do the same thing, but now I'm going to actually, when I, when I verify the result, I'm actually gonna verify I'm going to go back to the network table server and I'm going to see that if my results are actually sitting out there to that server. So instead of mocking network tables up in this test, I actually instantiate a network tables client. Um, I uh, create an image processor again and uh, I, I reread my image. And then, uh, and of course, I've got some utility components to try to compare my values to, same as the other test. I make my call now. Now, instead of verifying that simply the call to, to network tables was made, I'm actually gonna go actually call back to the network table server with get Boolean and get number, and I'm gonna compare it to my expected results. So now I have a system test that has tested everything absolutely end to end. So I hope you can see the, the nuances and the differences uh, about why each one of those kinds of tests are important and what it is that you need to do to test them. You might ask yourself, well, why go to all the trouble to do all three of these since they kind of do something similar? One answer is if you were, let's say you, you have the system test because the system test is the thing that does the, the most encompassing test. It actually tests whether or not the whole thing works. Well, what if something in this whole scheme fails? You know, what happens if, uh, you know, you, you can't call uh, this network table simulator for some reason? Maybe your firewall's broken or something, or, um, you know, maybe your pipeline is broken or anything in here is broken. It's going to take you a little bit of time to kind of, when you run the test, you're going to get a failure and you're going to get, you know, probably an assertion failure down here. Well, 
you know, you got to figure out in all of this stuff what it is that caused that assertion to fail in the first place. And that's really the, re the purpose of these other tests. These, the, these tests become more and more specific to the things that, that they're actually doing. And so they cause you to catch things in a more granular way such that when you correct those things, then this system test more than likely will start passing once you fix um, whatever dependencies are broken in the system test. So that's one good reason. There's several others. Uh, this video is going on longer than I had anticipated. Um, a lot of other good reasons, but um, hopefully at least this gives you a flavor for each one of the tests that you can run, uh, can run and write um, while you're sitting around waiting for your robot to get finished. Uh, thank you so much for uh, your time, and I hope you enjoyed the video.